Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for tea time. Today we have a little hibiscus and green tea. Man, really, really light, really good. So, good morning, good morning. If you're brand new, which a lot of you are, I would say in the last 30 days, according to statistics, we got about 6,000 plus brand new subscribers. I feel blessed. Thank you for being here, thank you. A lot of you have come looking for information about that series that I'm currently doing, Life After Adobe, Cutting the Cord. So I wanted to discuss something with you that I've gotten this question over and over and over. I literally have went through probably two or 3,000 comments. I don't know, it's a ton. It is absolutely a ton. All just amazing stuff. And you guys have just great, I mean, literally great alternatives to all the different Adobe packages. And in the comment area, and as well as in the description, I'm going to put a link. So you can go there and see this list that I'm putting together of all the alternatives. And if there's something that's missing, please put it into the comment. And as possible, I will add it to the list so that everyone can see what is available when it comes to alternatives to Adobe. Now, the fear or the pain point of many of you stems from Lightroom. Now, a lot of you are coming to other things like video. A lot of you are people that do painting and they wanna know what is available on Photoshop side or maybe InDesign or even Illustrator and you guys need to do vectoring or whatnot. There's a lot of you out there. But Lightroom has been the big pain point. And a lot of you guys say, listen, Joe, what, how, how are you just leaving so easily and not worrying about all of your edits? Well, there's something that's kind of hidden and I wanna tell you a little bit about it in Lightroom. And what it is, is the ability to create sidecar files. Now, if you don't know what a sidecar file is, it's basically an XMP file. It's a small file that all of your changes, let's say, your metadata is written to. Now, by default, Lightroom writes all of your changes to its catalog. Well. For the most part, those catalogs stay with Adobe, okay? They don't migrate along with you to another package, okay? Because the other packages really can't read those Adobe catalogs very well. There is some exceptions to that, and I'll get into that in a later video. But let's just say for the most part, if you're migrating to a new Photo Raw editor, okay, you can't really take all those edits that you've done over the years from your catalog, but, that little secret file that can be written, all right, will allow you to take the majority of those changes. Now, if it's something really specific where you're using brushes and taking stuff out, that's not gonna move on. But all of your changes to exposure and saturation and Calvin and all of that stuff will come with you. Now, how do you do it? This is very, very important, okay, once again, automatically the way Lightroom is set up is it will write to the catalog only. Well, this is how you do it. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, you're gonna click on edit and then catalog settings. If you're on a Mac, you're gonna click on Lightroom Classic and then catalog settings. From there, you're gonna select the metadata tab. Now, you have two options. You have one option which will automatically write changes to an XMP. That's what you need to select. If you have not done this in the past and you need to do it manually, you can go to your grid view, select all of your pictures in a specific folder by hitting Control or Command A, and then you can hit Command S or Control S to save that metadata file. You can also click this icon in the thumbnail grid that basically says, hey, the metadata on this file needs to be updated. And when you click on that, it will automatically update that XMP file that you said now to start to create. The bottom line here is, is when you're done, you're going to have these small 1K, 2K, tiny files next to every single one of your photos. So if you have a photo that says John 112, right? And it's a, let's say a raw file. Okay. Let's say a CR2 file. Underneath that, you'll have John 112.xmp. That XMP file is basically that sidecar file that has all of your data in it. 
That is all of those changes, all of the metadata, all of that stuff is now written in there and they're tiny. Yeah, it gets to be a little cluttered when you have so many of these little files, but you now have the ability to move anywhere. All of those changes, let's say the majority of those changes that you make now in Lightroom, especially all the general changes, will all go with you to any platform, okay? Very, very important. What people don't understand is now you can load that file, that image into another photo editor, make edits to it, and then write that edit back to that XMP file. And when you load it back into Lightroom, it will say, hey, your XMP file changed. Do you want me to read that in and get those changes in here? You can say yes or no. If you say yes, then any of those changes that you made in the other program will now show up in Lightroom. So this is a really good way to make sure that you're double covered, right? CYA, you now have a catalog with all of your changes and you have all of these XMP files that also contain those changes. So you have the changes in two places, right? Really, really important and a very easy way to be able to migrate away from Lightroom if you ever need to or want to. And that's where we get into the whole cutting the cord, life after Adobe series that I'll be working on. So this is a little snippet, let's call it a little trick, a little secret that a lot of people don't know that even exist. And if you didn't, I hope this helped. If you did, it's a refresher. So that's it guys. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't been doing it in the past, do it now. Or if you have been doing it, make sure that your current version is actually still creating them. But sometimes as Adobe goes and updates Lightroom, it will change the settings. And now all of a sudden you'll find out that XMP files haven't been written for the last two months. Go back and have those files written very easily, get it done. And once again, it gives you that backup. So if you enjoy my content, as always, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be awesome. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. That's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Next week, I'm going to be off a couple of days, all right, because there's a lot of things going on. I have a lot. Number one, going through a lot of these software programs to see which works out best for me, and then I will let you know which ones I like and why I like them to help you hopefully make a decision if you are going to be cutting that Adobe cord. So we'll see you very soon. Stay tuned. A lot more videos coming. Have a great day. Take care, guys. Bye.